All right, YouTubers, what we have here is a 2023 GMC AT4X Sierra with an AEV bumper. Okay, beautiful truck. And the goal here today is to put a Warren winch in it. And this is what it's going to look like eventually. That is a Warren Xeon 10S Platinum winch. All right, installed, not easy can be done. <laughs> All right. Like little parts and stuff. Here's some various tools you're going to need. Impact driver, screwdriver, some lights, metric tools, trimmers, cutters. Don't forget the cutting stuff. Yeah. 17, 16, 15 millimeter. You might as well just combination get right to it. Vital components, angle grinder, cutter, hearing protection, eye protection. Materials. This is what we're going to use here is a uh, Xeon Platinum 10S Warren winch. You're going to need that about 2200 bucks. Up above here is a Warren Xeon long relocation kit. All right. That's a control pack 28 inch or 78 inch relocation kit. You're going to probably want the better fair lead, Haas fair lead. This is a uh, Warren Epic Haas Fairlead, one inch. If you want low profile, you can get one and a half if you want higher profile. You're gonna need to, okay, so, oh, so this is about 300 bucks for the relocation kit. This is about 100 bucks, 70 bucks on Amazon. And you're gonna need this AEV winch mount package for the winch. And we got a sidewinder here, um, but we're gonna go to a factor 55 because this is a little bit too big. Yeah, so this is a new mechanic, Mark. He's going to be installing all this shit, and I'm going to be helping him. Um, so I'm just going to do this really quickly. Um, I'm going to show you guys vital um, points um, so that you know what to do at certain times, but you're not going to sit there and watch Mark struggle on every single Torx bolt. All right, see bye. Okay, first step for me on my side here is to uh, install the relocation kit. I'm going to take the winch out of the package and disassemble it and put the relocation kit on it. This is just a view of where that relocation kit's gonna go up inside here. So that's my winch pack. And uh, you're gonna be able to reach through this little area here to turn the winch on and off. It's right, let's see here. The button, can, I don't know if I can see the button there for some odd reason. There's the button, the green button, yeah. So if I reach in there, I can flip that. You can see it blinking now. Let me see, is it blinking? Yeah. So I'm not gonna leave that on at all times. I'm, it's pretty easy to reach in there and turn them on and off. Um, and of course my wire's a little long right now. It's hooked up, but I'm gonna shorten that eventually. But this is the AEV bracket here. All right, we're gonna use that that came with the AEV winch install kit. Okay, so what you're going to need here is a little impact driver with a Torx T15. And the first step is going to be put some padding on the floor or something, unless you have a rack to put this thing on. But it's to remove this plastic liner right here on both sides. It goes up into the skip plate. Once you get that done, you're going to remove the wheel liner. Both sides, a whole bunch of T15s. There's going to be one little pop. Right there, the pop rivet, and then you're going to remove the wheel liner, wheel moldings, and then you're going to remove this trim piece here. Then you're going to remove the grill, and that's going to allow you to take the bumper out. Once you're to get remove the grill, there's going to be a spray fitting here and a, a connection for the camera on this side. I'll show you that. All right, so same deal on the other side. Yeah, so we're going to remove uh, those torques up underneath there to get that front splash guard out. And I recommend moving your tire right and left. Just go back and forth. You might have to start your car a few times to move it back and forth. All right, we're whipping off the skid plate here to uh, allow for the removal of the two anterior flaps underneath. So there's the skid plate and those two anterior plastic liners taken off. Next step, 
wheel liners. There's no way you can just loosen that. Right? Pretty painful, but you got to take out this entire Because look, this thing's loose now. Liner, including the little mud guard flap. <laughs> this is painful. <laughs> it's a lot of screws. All right. Here's that Warren Xeon 10S Platinum. Wanted that because uh, we wanted that electric electronic clutch so we could completely bury the winch and not have to worry about um, engaging or disengaging the clutch on this winch. So we can do it with the winch completely hidden. Uh, the associated parts and pieces that come with that. Get your uh, remote on the charger with the supply charging cord right away because we're going to need to wind some cord in here before we mount it. That relocation kit comes with a new cover. Miscellaneous hardware. Big long cables, control cables, power cables. Hardware pack there. First step. New ground cable there for the motor. I'm going to get these little four torque screws here. There's four of them before you put the cord on. So once we've removed those four torques up underneath there so you can get this module off don't take it all the way off because we're going to go ahead and wind our winch line okay i got it hooked to a battery here um the first thing you want to do with your winch line get this sleeve on that sleeve that protective sleeve that comes with it that's going to end up at the other end but if you don't put it on now you ain't gonna be able to ever put it on so don't ask me how i know <laughs> all right that's not easy but you use the wire to pull it through okay because you're going to put this next. Okay, you want that key up the hole, up, so you can pull it back out if you ever have to. All right, it's going to go in there. Um, what was I going to say? There was something important here. I'm going to take two people to do this. So we got the uh, winch line on there with this protective sleeve intact. And uh, now we can unhook it, turn it off, and take that off. Put the relocate kit on. All right, so uh, when you're doing the relocate kit, there's a really good video by Warren that shows the whole process here. So remember before I put the line on there, I took those four, there was four Torx bolts, front and back, two in the front, two in the back. I'm gonna remove that. So he's having fun. All right, so Mark's been busy. He's got the wheel liner on the right side off. Two splash guards up front. Skid plate, splash guard on the right, or it's card for flex. And the fender player, or fender liner on the left. And the reason why you have to do that is because you have to get to this little screw. See that little screw right there? Right there, okay? And so once the fender liner's off, then you have to pull this molding back at least just a little bit. There are a bunch of these little white fasteners, like, See this little guy. If you squeeze it right there with a uh, with a um, needle nose, it pops out pretty easy, and it doesn't pop out of the fender liner. But if these little white things do pop out, you have to reinsert them before putting the liner back on. See how they're all still in the liner there, all the way up. It's about as far as you need to go, just so you can get to that one bolt. And you're not gonna do it any other way. Okay, let's take that bolt out. All right, and then as soon as that bolt's out, see that that white piece of plastic there? There's like two two bolts up high, and this bolt here, and that <coughs> that piece of plastic has to come out next on both sides. All right, so the basic wiring for the uh, winch relocation kit's done, and it's on the plate that they provided. All right, we got. Three bolts there, they're gonna go into these three tabs. Here, here, to start undoing the bolt? And here. They give you some provided bolts here, nuts and washers also for fastening a, to the bracket. Okay. Mark's making some more progress here. He's removed those two white pieces that were underneath the uh, anterior fender. Yes. And then he's removed this big section here with those push rivets and the uh, hood latch release okay so now we've got access all the way around down in here on mine I found a sheet of paper pushed up against my friggin radiator right there as a, a build sheet Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah 
it's kind of cool. It has all the numbers from all the parts and pieces they put on the truck that it was left in there. So those little push um, rivets, just use a little fine regular screwdriver and you can pop those things up pretty easy. All right, so the next step I'll try behind you. is a little bit of a scary one. Taking this piece out. Okay. This trim on both sides. Okay, so the ones we need to remove now, see that bracket right down there? I'm gonna see if I can get a pointer to it. Or that little guy, right? It's the same color. It's, it's the same color as your vehicle. Yeah, so I'm on it right there. Move the, move the light a little bit so we can get people to see here. But it's it's that, the same color as your vehicle, though. The so bracket to the outside there. Not that one up there, but that one right there. And what I found is if I come down here and I push on this little hombre. Push it. Yep. Mark's pulling on the trim and I'm pushing. Did it move? Hold on. So I'm, I'm going to need to get my... But you get the idea. All right, so we're still having issues trying to get this trim piece off. It's a bear. There's these little clips on the inside. The lower one's the hardest one to release right there. To get it to come off. And there's just a series of these coming up. We've got them all off. And this little piece here has some plastic clips on the other side. We broke the middle one. Just here, that's what we're going to do. Start from here, Fred. a pry bar, just trying to free those up a little bit so we can pop them out. Okay, so... This thing is kind of scary. Sounds like you're gonna break something. Eighty thousand dollar vehicle, but you're popping these little things out. See how they're in the grill there? It's prying. They're ripping out. Yeah, let's release the top one again. Yeah, the top one. Mm -hmm. So what we were using is a big long pry bar here. Where'd that pry bar go? Or we're just gonna reach them down in here and release these tabs. Tab right there. Let's see if I can focus this thing. Yeah, it's released, Marcus. Okay. Well, I want to come out. Because it's stuck. All right, don't drop it, okay? You don't want to scratch it. Let me see why it's not coming out here. straight out. Get it on video, you breaking your trim piece. Huh? I don't know. All right. All right. We got these two trim pieces off. This is the part. This is the brutal part right here. With these clips. There's these little clips. Those two brutal steel ones. And then there's these plastic ones. And then inside, there's multiple clips that clip on the inside there and across the bottom. I'll show you those here. Broke one off. Snapped off one right here. But there's a clip, 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 clip. And a clip up there. I don't know what that is. Oh, there's a couple clips here too. Another broke. Yeah. No. That's not we broken. only broke one, I guess. But so now, in order to get the uh, grill off, we got to pop this off. Okay, Mark, just lift that up. What's that? Pop this off. Okay. Keep on just go straight across. Pull these off from the inside out because these hook over the end of the bumper right here. So you gotta go like that. See how it hooks? So you gotta and you put it when you put it back on. You gotta hook it first. Okay. Okay. Pop that one off. Okay. Set that on this side. So now you got an $80,000 truck that's in parts and pieces all over your driveway. Charlie, are you impressed? Yeah. Um, now, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take. It looks like it's getting more fun. I didn't like that part. 10 mil bolt here, 10 mil bolt here, 10 mil bolt here. So three on the bottom, four on the top. There's one right here, 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 and here. Now we're going to take off the grill. And we're going to take off that AEB license plate cover. All right, while well Mark is doing the uh, 
the front. I'm gonna finish up this part here. Um, the relocation kit, the long relocation kit. Okay. I'm opening up my AED box of goodies here. This is the winch mount kit. And basically two pieces we're gonna use out here. Well, maybe three. Here's some hardware. This is the bracket to mount the relocation kit. That's a license plate holder, I'm not gonna use that. Some kind of funky for the fair lead. This is the uh, come up um, relocation box holder. I'm not gonna use that. We're gonna use American made products here. That's the winch mount. Pretty simple, but be hard to reproduce. And this box cost me about 500 bucks just for two parts essentially. So that's our winch mount. <clears throat> Okay, and let's end this one here. Okay, so I've got my AED bracket that we're going to be installing in the truck, and that's for the uh, come up relocation kit. But um, we're obviously going to be mounting a Warren. I'm going to use that hole up there on the top. I'm just going to lead it all the way up there. I'm going to spin this around so that mounts up. I'm going to drill a hole there, and drill a hole there. And this little bracket here is going to get in the way of my winch cable, so I'm going to cut that off. Okay, so you'll see that in a second. All right, so I uh, just cut that bracket off of there. I used a cutoff wheel, and then I sanded it a little bit, made it nice and smooth. And now we're going to go fit this in the trucks because we need to drill a hole in the truck. So Mark's going to finish taking off the grill here. All right, I'm gonna, so kind of leave, so these right here kind of engage in the metal. There's little clips that go down in the metal, so you gotta kind of lift those up. Okay, see so how you lift them up and then it kind of pops, and then you lean the whole thing forward. Oh, yeah. Just a little, and then you pull. Not that far. There we go. Just a little bit. Did you get the bottom bolts out? Yeah. Oh, here's another clip down here. Yeah, there's some clips in there. Yeah, that's what those, down on those that's what, pull up. That's that clip right there. Probably if we pinched it with a needle nose, it would be easier. All right, so I am going to... See that little clip right down in here? A little clip right there. I'm just going to pinch it. Pull out. Okay. Did that come out a little bit? There you go. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. change hands here. There's that little clip. Just gonna pinch it with the needle nose. The marks right there. There we go. All right, so everything's clear up there. There's probably a few more clips down there somewhere. Let me see. This thing right here. Oh, right here in the center. You got a center clip? Or oh, is, is, there, the is there a bolt there? Is that a plug? Let me see. Is that a plug? It's just the plug for this. I think yeah, no, here. it actually, it's not. It is another one of those clips. It is. Okay. Yeah. Let me see here. You want a light? No, I think I got it. You can try to pull it out a little bit. Hang on. I missed it. So this is there it goes. Okay, it popped it. Okay, so now. Now that we've got the grill free, don't scratch it, be careful. We're going to unplug over here. This is a little tricky. All right. This is for the camera. So you're going to um, pull this thing out. It's a little Christmas tree thing. Yeah, I'll film you there. Just to give you some work in access here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one off, too. Please don't. Mm. Okay, that's fine. Well, we got, okay, so focus on this, Mark. Mm -hmm. So this little bugger, you gotta flick it forward. Yeah. I think, yeah, flick it forward. And then you gotta pinch it together, I think. Alright. Alright. 
So all that exercise of taking all of that shit off, basically, so you could get to those two bolts, that one and that one. Okay. Now those aren't the only bumper bolts. You can see where our winch is going to go down inside this little pocket here, Whoa. with significant modifications, which we will discuss. Yeah. Mark is really excited. About that, that's the. He just wants his to look like that. It'll be there. I just want it to go back together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marcus. So next up, we're gonna we're gonna um, fit this plate. So let's get a 13 millimeter socket. This is the relocation bracket that came with that AEB kit. That's right. And it's gonna fit right. No, not that one. I want you to take out this one here. I know. I'm just seeing something. But uh, these guys. Millimeter? Yeah. Right, we'll now, this is a little bit of a tricky part. You gotta uh, get this bolt up in this little hole. Okay. And that's gonna secure the AEV bracket. And then you uh this is per AEV instructions. You push this little star washer. Hold the camera for me. Alright, that bolt's pretty secure. Now stay right there, Mark. I'm gonna go ahead and Put that top bolt out. Now the AEV bracket. Let's grab a hook. Almost. Almost. Oh, yeah. All right. There it Can is. Come on up here, Mark. Yeah. So now the AEV bracket goes back into that bolt we took out just a minute ago. down okay we're gonna drill a hole and put a rib nut right there here comes the fun part make sure everything's flush and good actually i don't like that like that so i'm gonna push it like that i think it looks better well i'll make it parallel because this side's off a little bit even with this bolt here what do you think marcus yeah. you satisfied with that parallel yep Fucked up is making the truck. <laughs> so now that we got that hole, we're gonna go ahead and enlarge it. I'm gonna start right there. It was. Ow, auto shit. Okay. This is our rib nut that's gonna go in there. I'm just checking the size. I gotta go one more, I figured. I want to make sure. So, rib nut tool, the rib nut that's supplied with the AEV kit. And we're going to squeeze it. Tap the nut a little bit more. Okay, rib nut installed. So now our AEV bracket will go right in there. And the bolt below. Bracket below. And line up real nice on that hole there. Those two holes. Perfect. Looks nice and parallel. Nice. Yeah. Is taking off the bumper bolts now. There's two underneath, black ones, and then on the outside, supporting the outside are um, some big galvanized ones up there. Get those three from below. One big one here, one big one there, and then 
where you get that bumper off. You're gonna need to unclip this little guy. I'm gonna pull it back. You hold the hold the camera there for me a second, Mark. What's that? Hold the camera there for me a second. Get this. You pull it down. Let's separate. No, it's all right. Fucking turn off. So we removed all those bumper bolts. Okay. Now there's two more right here. So Mark, we'll go ahead and feed this underneath here and try to pry that up. Yeah, easy. A E V symbol. There you go. I'll just pop it. Go down. Go down and just slide it up and down. There you go. Now it pulls it out. And there's two more bolts right there. Each yeah. side. Go ahead and do that side. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep my bumper bolts all together. Right. Are those the different size? No, those are good. Same thing to the other side. This thing I just fall. Go ahead and take the license plate cover off here. Two bolts. And the bumpers come off. Do mm, not. Collecting all my bumper bolts in my little AEB lid there. down so the bumper came off pretty easy after doing all that now dude i do not like taking these things out there's those, no way we can take those out those are coming out these two bolts have to be sacrificed in order to place a warren xenon as well as all this metal in oh here. my god dude that's like freaking two of six bolts yeah that's fine oh right. dude winch mount just went on. We put the bolts from the inside of the winch area out to make more space for the winch. Because Is that supposed to be good? Super tight. Okay. And we remove these two bolts, one here, one here. So, yep, I'm going to be a little weaker. Um, not engineered, other than standard backyard engineering. Hopefully it holds up. Alright. So this is where it gets a little scary. As you can see, the winch is pushed all the way back. And right here is the overhang. doesn't fit. There's the overhang. So it needs to go back about, about a half inch. Yeah, about a half inch. So in order to do that, you can either grind on your winch, which I decided not to do, <laughs> or you can grind on the metal. Right there. Right there. Right there. See where it's hitting? So I'm gonna show you what I did. Okay, we're in the process of starting the cutting and grinding. That little L-shaped bracket I could not get to fit on mine on the skid plate, so that's coming off. And I'll show you, we're actually going to end up reversing how the skid plate was placed. On this one that's completed, the skid plate is actually on the outside. You can see where that little part has been cut off and repainted. Charlie's getting in the way here, but it looks nice. It's still a skid plate, but it works well. And to start grinding on the metal there you can see where I've kind of written used a sharpie there to kind of mark where I have to cut metal on that side I have to cut metal here too this has to be ground way down all that leaves me go or you can grind on your winch your choice sorry the modifications we made here we cut off I'm using that yeah I'll show them that that top coat direct to metal POR 15 rust preventative. So we cut that little L shaped flange off the front here, just like that. That's gone. And then we nah. cut, notch the corners because they have to go flush against the bumper. And that looks like that's about a back, about one inch. inch and an eighth. An inch and an eighth. What's it on that side? About an inch and an eighth. Yep. Yeah, so that's what you need to do so it lays flush underneath the bumper. Now Mark's going to throw some, some uh, paint on those. There's the pieces I cut off. Get us some slag. All right. You filming? Yep. All right, here we go. You do this side, man. Alright, 
So uh, we've done some grinding here. And all you engineers out there, don't give me too much grief I'm saying it's going to fail because I ground away some spinal structures, but I had to grind away a little bit and work that winch to ride back there. <clears throat> it's the only way you're going to be able to do it. And you can see those two bolts. One here. Or get a different winch. One here. Came on. Yeah, you could get a Chinese winch and fit right in there. But a USA winch will not. So now we're going to paint it up and mount the winch. Yeah. Alright, so painted it up. It's pretty good. Looks like factory. That's the way it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> then a worn winch would fit. Alright, now what? So we're installing that. That, that doesn't seem like the right size. Well, that That's 13? 15. That's 15. 15. Um, so here's the, the AED bracket with that little corner piece cut off. And the reason why I cut off that corner piece so it doesn't rub on those wires that are going on to the winch there. Okay? But there's where we put the rib nut and a bolt and a bolt and then down below. Mark is going to go ahead and fire that up. Down below we got the bracket on that bracket there. Okay. All right, so we're bolting up the winch now. We're able to get it back by grinding to where the front of the winch sits right about there. On that one, right about there on that one, which is what you what is required in order to get those bolts in. Okay, a little tricky getting that one in because of that extra little divot there. So we went ahead and wired this thing, and this is what I did: is I brought it in this way on the side. In order to do that, you have to cut out that little section right there. You can see where we cut out. There's a piece of plastic we cut out. We brought the ground from the motor. It didn't require a uh, extension or anything. We brought it around this way, behind there. The other motor ground, I used a heat shrink butt splice. And so now you can see if you reach down here, I can flick on the wrench. Where is it? Okay. Right there. That's She's on. Blinking green. So she's blinking green. She's wired up just tentatively. A little zip tie there to hold that. Mortar ground, heavy ground. We have six wires. Big ground, motor ground, controller, and F1, 2, and A. All right. Which was mislabeled from one, which is pretty interesting. It worked right. So here's our controller. Charge got that controller. Got to hold the two outside buttons. Down. Oops. Nice and control. Two outside buttons. Okay, Marcus, come grab a hold of this thing. What's that? I'm gonna winch you out a little bit here. We'll just give it a shot. You ready? Yep. Going out. And you're going back in. Alright, I'm gonna go back in. We'll leave it at that because we need to tighten that. Alright, so now. Time to put all of this back on. I was happy. <laughs> Double long one. All right, after verifying that the winch worked, now we're coming along here and doing some zip ties. I put one on either side of the connector here through the existing hole in the winch. Bunched everything together here. There's your two grounds coming from below. I went ahead and drilled a couple of holes right here through the bottom of the uh, louvers there and uh, put them up there to make sure that they can't touch any metal here or vibrate. And then this one's through an existing hole, which was right there. I had to enlarge the hole a little bit to get those big zip ties in there. And we just routed it on up, tons of zip ties, and uh, brought it on in. This is a view from underneath. We put a loop in there for the excess wire. To zip the hell out of it. Mark is finishing up. And there's where that tab used to be on that um, existing AED winch bumper installation bracket for the come up winch that I cut off. And you can see that's right where the wires come out there. And so that's why we don't want that on there. That's why we cut it off so it would rub on there. There's a splice for the motor ground. That splice, heat shrink. She's firm. I'm not rubbing. 
All right, and just when you thought you were done with the nasty stuff, we've got some more stuff to do, okay? So now we gotta take off this plastic piece right here, all the bumper, four torque screws. Mark's gonna get that off. Okay. That thing is going to require some serious cranking. So Mark, go ahead and he's going to install the uh, fair lead there, the fair nice lead. I'm and I am going to cut that and I'm going to show you like two more days of work. We've got lots of work to go. Just taking out the little clip rings there. So I don't get in the way of the halls, we We got, we bought the Epic halls leads. Does it look better than those big bulky ones that come with the wrench? This trim piece here, which is coming out here, obviously hits on the winch pretty hardcore. So I've drawn a line there. We're going to have to cut it way back. It's going to make it much weaker. This portion is going to have to be cut off in order to uh, fit the termination of the wires right there. And that side has to be cut. And the insides have to be cut back as well in order to make this fit over the winch. But you're actually going to be able to maintain all four of those clips. That one's just going to be a little weaker. So we've modified this piece of um, plastic here. Let me just show you. So I cut the hell out of it there. You can see I used a cutoff saw and then I smoothed it up. We'll clean that up a little bit more. But then we also cut a notch for the uh, for that. So it's gonna fit kind of over that like that. But you gotta really cut it hardcore. It will not fit. And it's still plenty strong and you don't lose any clips. Test fit it here and maybe do a little more grinding if we need to. Okay, we just got the uh, bumper back on, shoehorned in there. And when he says shoehorn, he's not kidding. He's got to cut that to that winch electronics there. It is tight, tight, tight against the boot. Continuing on here with the uh, bumper install, so we tighten down that one and that one. And these two up front, right there and there, right there and there. And then there's these two black ones right there and there. And those two black ones right there and there. And now Mark is putting on this one right here, which is on that little right in there. stringer. I'm gonna tuck it in. To hammer it. Okay. Okay. We, we, just, we just tested the winch and it's good. About ready to start buttoning things back up. It looks sweet. All right, now's a good time before we do too much buttoning up. Go ahead and hook these wires back up for the parking sensors, I believe. So Mark's gonna line those up. I'll lift this up for you. I'm just trying to say where the just where. Buckle it in there. Now there is a little Christmas tree connector there too. Okay, now that red thing you slide the opposite direction from where it was. Like right there. Yeah. You slide Button it up. forward. Right, now there's a little Christmas oh, right here, tree that goes right into here. the bumper or something. Right yeah. there. It goes right in there. Okay. There's a little Christmas tree connector. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Perfect. So that's all buttoned up. Our wiring's all buttoned up. Is that is that together all the way? works. Yep. Okay, we're going ahead and installing the trim now. Remember, you gotta hook it on the outside first. We put the front on too early. I'm just gonna have to lift that back up a little bit. Okay. That goes down. And this goes down. Oh, I like getting rid of some pieces. So I'm just going to hook the outside. Bring it around to the front. Now I put 
put those AED covers back on there too. You can't even see the winch anymore. It's buried. Next step. Put oh yeah, that's what on. I was just pushing on. The, yeah. yeah. So the grill needs to go on. And remember, we have a uh, washer hook up here. Let's just squeeze on both sides to connect it and disconnect it. And and we have the uh, camera connector right here. And remember, there's these pieces of rubber we got to get underneath. Right. Uh, kind of hard. Right there. Get the light. Hang on a second. Just gonna lift it yeah. up a little bit. Push in a little bit. Just get your. And these are these are tough on myself. There, I, I think I got it going a little bit now. Where are you doing? All right. So a little correction there on sequence. You got to put the grill in before you put the front trim piece in. Uh, because it has a hard time getting over it and getting underneath here. Plus, you got to put these three bolts in. So, um, we're going to go ahead and bolt that up and then put the trim piece in. There's a trim piece over there. Believe that. So, Mark is uh, putting some of those little connectors in the front here. Good. Three low. And one, four high. Four more to go up here. And these all kind of self-center and pop on because there's a little thing that pops in over here. Just going gentle on those because it's plastic. All right, so the trim's going on now. Not the easiest of things to do, but it kind of, it's pretty easy. Pop it down. says you can't put a Xeon Warren winch in here. So Mark is putting this thing back in. You got to hook the, uh, you got to hook this in here first, Mark. Come at an angle there. You toggle it a little bit towards you. No, this has to go. Yeah, that's right in. Nicely done. All right, so those are just the push, those little plastic push rivets. Probably what, 10 of those things? So Mark is finishing putting in all of these little plastic all right. rivets. And that part is in and done. Now we have gotta put the handle back on. Critical, because you close your hood, pretty hard to open without that. True that. He was smart, he put his little screws right in there so he didn't lose them. If you're wondering why we have the hood tied down so it doesn't hit my garage door, I only have a seven foot garage door, so it's kind of tight. And uh, I made a little mistake on doing mine. I opened the garage door with my hood up, and I got that. <laughs> 800 miles on this rig. It's got a scratch from that damn garage door. That's all right there. Next step, putting the trim pieces oh, on. I still think this was maybe one of the worst, dude, other than yeah, the cutting. It was a little bit scary because it's an expensive part. Right. Trying to color match it via there. The reason why you have to take that out is because you can't take this, this is lips underneath this, and so you can't, you can't take this off without taking that off. Of course so, not. We're going to line those little guys up in the groove, just pop in from top to bottom, everything should pop. There should be another popper on the side there. Nice. Okay. Seems way too easy. Way easier going in than, than coming out. Yeah. What is the what is the thing that clicks on over here? I'm just trying to look. And that's see that, that's that white piece that connects on to all that. I'll show you. This the thing? white piece indexes in. No, no, no. I know that, but I'm I'm saying, what was that click that was seemed like it was around here somewhere? I think it was all these little. Oh, this piece that broke off right here. No, the piece didn't break off. Yeah, right here. No. Yeah. No. For sure, dude. Yep, right there. No. The only thing that broke it is this little, this one little tab. Right there. Okay. That one's out, because you still have two. You're good. Okay. Line it up, and snap her. Send her home. 
So now the next step, coming out to our parts pile, are these little guys. They're kind of a bear. But these use three of these type of nuts here. Yeah, I gotta remember that's three because they're hard to see. Two of them are way back in. Yeah. And that uh, it kind of snaps in. You gotta make sure you line up these little things up into the fitting, into the, the plastic trim, and then you then you screw them in. Right yes. and left. Okay. Okay. So the uh, white trim piece is reinstalled. These little plugs go through the fender. Um, only hook up two of the nuts or two of the bolts. Don't place this one because this one goes in last with the um, fender miner. And Mark is uh, in the process of placing, installing the white trim piece on this side. and pieces left to install or dwindling here. We got a fender liner and that front splash plate. And another fender liner and a splash plate. And skid plate. So after Mark installs that white piece, we're gonna install the fender liners. And then we're gonna install those front splash plates. And then we're gonna install the skid plate. And she's done. It's gonna be awesome. Here. So Mark has got the fender liners all reinstalled in there. So the next step is to put these little um, nut. Go ahead and slide it in there. So the AEV bumper mount has already threaded inserts in there. So we're going to put a threaded insert here. And right here? And right over there. Yeah, for the... Uh, skid plate so that goes in between there's two pieces of metal here okay i don't know if you can see there but there's two pieces of metal it's going to go in between and i'm just gonna tap it in with a hammer and you want it to go very easy but it goes all right so you can see i've got that in there now it actually floats in there a little bit for a little bit of adjustment but that's that little oh no see you're 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 stuck you're going uh -huh. out so you can't do that pull it back out yeah oh yeah we're pushing in i guess there you go now let's see if we can tap it in tap it back and forth you know, almost funny? buttoned up here let me just point something out make sure you don't forget this one bolt that goes here yeah. Okay. And then on that white plastic piece, there are two bolts up in here. Yes. And I, you know what's two funny? Two bolts up in there. So what's that? What's that orange thing? That... Oh, the one is yellow. Oh, hang on. Did it fall out of the bump? Yeah. Okay. So we got to pull it. We got to. Well, try try to try to um, get it to pop in. It might pop. Yeah. Let's go ahead and start popping them in. Sometimes it'll pop. Well, it didn't. But. Uh, and there's another one out right down here. Yeah. Mine, mine did that too, but it still popped in. No, that one's not going to do it. So pull, pull them out. And so when that happens, what you have to do... But this one popped out too now. Yeah, it's a bitch when it does that. So we got to pop them back out, feed them back in the liner or the arch molding, and then... God damn, so fucking... All right, there it is. What do you think, Marcus? Oh, it's a lot of work, man. It's impressive how much work it is. Yeah, that's brutal. I mean, keep in mind, this guy just did this over the course of, you know, a few days, just in the last few days. So he knew everything that needed to be done, and it still took us 10 hours. 10 hours. Two of us. You need to, you need to uh, be committed. Yeah. <laughs> and once again, that's a uh, Warren Xeon, Xeon Platinum 10S. Warren 10S Xeon Platinum. Which will made go. in USA. And Mark is going to order a Factor 55 um, closed link shackle there. And uh, I'm going to get rid of this thing. This, this uh, sidewinder looks too big to me. Um, looks like it looks like my truck's sucking on a binky. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. There's the two trucks.
Zion. 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 Yeah, Zion. Tennis, synthetic, platinums. All right. And that's a wrap. Thank God. That was brutal. So, those winches are a little bit different than this on the old Range Rover. You got a M8000 on the Range Rover. Simple install with an ARB bumper. And this one up here on the Tundra is another Warren winch. That's a 15,000 pound winch on the Tundra with an ARB bumper. So, I'm a Warren kind of guy. Got them on all my ATVs as well. So, no, no come up on my AT4X. I went American. All right, there it is. We just put a shackle there for right now until we get that Factor 55 uh, link. E-link, I think is what they call it. It looks pretty badass. Actually, it looks cooler than that. So that's going to go away. I'm going to go to the E-link as well. But anyways, that's a wrap. That's uh, installing a uh, Warren 10S. Xeon Platinum Winch and a AT4X functions. It works great. Looks awesome. All right, thanks for watching. Take care. All right, there he goes. That is one badass truck now. Ready to four by.